Today we're gonna decode blueberry flavor because it's a great one to learn from because it really comes down to two characteristic compounds that really develop that blueberry flavor. And then we're gonna round it out with some common fruit esters and a little vanillin or vanilla to kind of give it some depth. Now, if you're new to this channel, this is a great video for you to jump in on and learn because most fruit flavors have a common base of esters. And there's like usually a few compounds that really help develop whether it's a strawberry or a blueberry flavor. And anybody can make these formulas. They're really simple. This is just a seven ingredient formula plus propylene glycol. And it's just simple mixing, but you'll end up with a blueberry flavor. Now, if you've been following along with some of my other videos, so strawberry, banana, bubble gum, four of the compounds in this recipe are also used in those recipes. So we're only introducing three new compounds. And the key one for us today is linalool. Now you can say linalool, the wall at the end is because it is an alcohol. Now it has a characteristic citrusy floral kind of waxy note. It is also found in coriander. So if you don't like coriander like myself, it's not responsible for that flavor. Those are a couple other compounds. So this one tends to be more pleasant to deal with, but it is an interesting compound, readily available. And then the other compound is cis-3-hexanol. And this is that we use this in the strawberry formula. It smells like fresh cut grass. So if you were to take your lawnmower, cut some grass, pick it up and smell it, you'll get this smell. It's called leaf alcohol. Uh, both are found naturally. And the information comes from a patent in 1977. And the inventor just basically mixed varying proportions of these two and ended up with a blueberry flavor. It tends to be more cis-3-hexanol and a little less of the linalool. You know, a decent blueberry flavor, again, it's going to have a more intense flavor than a natural blueberry. Uh, a lot, of, unless you get the northern blueberries, the really small ones that are red inside, these tend to be more sweet and sour with a hint of fruitiness, not necessarily well-defined blueberry flavor, but a really ripe, good northern blueberry does have a very distinct flavor. Now I've previously made a variation of this recipe, just testing things out. And you do get a blueberry flavor or aroma. Making the connection between the fruit and these flavors, you know, there needs to be some visual indicators and sweet and acidity to help, but it does smell like blueberry. I don't want to use the term artificial because these are all natural ingredients. Everything here is found in nature and we're just recombining them for our purposes. So, but it, it does have that more intense blueberry flavor or aroma that you find in commercial products, which makes it very useful for adding to syrups, cocktails, you know, sodas. You can really kind of enhance the flavor of blueberries in a dessert if you're a chef. So there's lots of things you can do with this. And it's not just about replacing blueberries, it can be working with blueberries to get that, you know, more, punch in your flavor. And again, as I mentioned, all natural compounds. So technically it's a natural flavor, but it does come across slightly more intense. And some people would define it as artificial because of that intensity. But uh, I don't like to use the word artificial because these are again, all natural. So actually let's just put this formula together because it does make an interesting flavor. So the first ingredient is linalool, and we're going to put 0.75 grams of this in here. And again, if you're new to the channel, all this is is simply weighing things out and you will get those flavors. And then the next one is cis-3-hexanol. I'm just using up a small sample I have here and we're going to need 1.25 grams of this. Now at this point, I'm just going to kind of stir this up a little bit and give it a smell based on this old patent and see if there is actually some resemblance to blueberry. A little bit, it, it, again, most things need some aging to actually get there. So, you know, three days of aging really does help develop the flavor. Uh, that leaf alcohol really dominates early on, but it will probably uh, settle to the background a little bit once it's done aging. 
The next ingredient is ethyl acetate, and this is a pretty common ester. Uh, it's very light, so it gives a lot of um, lift to formulas. People do have a hard time finding it, but uh, I'll list some all these over on the Patreon, the recipe, all the links to suppliers so you can get it and make it. But four grams of ethyl acetate. And if you go over, as usual, that's okay. So the next ingredient is ethyl isovalerate. Now you'll find this in apple flavors, but also in iron brew. And it's kind of one of those characteristic flavors of that Scottish soda that really kind of makes it stand out. But we need two grams of this. Next ingredient is ethyl 2 methyl butyrate. And this is kind of another ester and it's just, uh, kind of rounds out the ester flavors. This one's more of a generic fruity flavor, but we only need one gram of this. And next on the list is isoamyl butyrate. And this was used in, can be used in pineapple and banana formulas. And we need half a gram of it. And last is vanillin or vanillin, and I pre-weigh out stuff just because it's easier. Powders tend to fall in there and you don't get an accurate number. So we just need half a gram of this, and I do recommend these static-free uh, weigh boats that everything just falls out and you don't get leftover powder clinging to everything. And basically that is our blueberry flavor, and we will just add 40 grams of propylene glycol to dilute it out. And that is it. Now I'm just gonna put this on a stir plate and then we'll do a quick taste test to see how it comes out. So while this is dissolving, I'm going to take that off and we're just gonna measure out our basic taster. And if you're new to the channel, a basic taster is just a 10% solution of sugar and water, so add 100 grams to a one liter bottle of water and then fill up to one liter. Uh, these ones with graduated marks really help. So we just add 100 mils to a beaker or a glass. Now we're just gonna put that on a stir plate. I'm gonna grab a magnetic stir, get it stirring, and we're gonna take our blueberry sample. Uh, you can do this one. I like using the aged ones. Again, aging just helps bring all the flavors together and make it more uniform. When doing these, you can taste them right afterwards, but you're gonna get better result if you give it at least 24 hours, or even a couple hours will make a difference. And as usual, just two drops. You can use more if you want, but taste it with two drops to start. You can use less if you want. It's just this idea that two drops at this dilution is going to get you in the ballpark of what you're looking for when it comes to using as a flavor. Now we'll let that stir for a second. And you can use this in cocktails, so you can make a martini. Anything with alcohol, you do need to use more. So non-alcoholic drinks, so like a soda, are gonna use less flavor. But universally, if you're using a, one of your own developed flavors in a cocktail, you need to use probably twice as much, but always taste it and try it. You're not gonna hurt anybody doing this by tasting it. You know, the flavor levels are still quite low, well below 500 parts per million. So you're going to get a more intense flavor if you use more, but again, if you go too high, it's just gonna have this off flavor that it's not quite pleasant. So start with two drops and then build up. So let's see how this tastes. And I'll just drink it out of the beaker because it's a flavor development channel. So yeah, it definitely does have a sweet, pleasant blueberry flavor. Uh, it does need a little bit of acidity to give it more of that natural blueberry flavor. But this has that kind of classic blueberry flavor of the commercial side, not necessarily of the natural side. Uh, you'd need to dilute this down a lot more. Uh, with the two drops, it really gives that intensity, but it's quite pleasant and something you would find at a level in a soda. But I would say this is a very successful recipe. I'm quite happy with it. And it's only seven ingredients and super simple to make. And I make this in real time. So, you know, less than, you know, 15 minutes. Without the talking, you know, five minutes to put it together. 
24 hours to age, and then you have something that you can put in drinks and make things really unique for people and give them a new experience. And that's what this channel is all about. I will post all my stuff over on Patreon, so sources for the ingredients and the recipe. If, you know, anybody who supports Patreon, I really do appreciate it. It does help keep this channel going. And if you have any questions that everybody needs an answer to, post it below. But if you have questions about formulas and stuff, post them over on Patreon and I will try to get back to you. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.